Welcome to News Channel 8, I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the stories we have for you tonight. Ex-government official pleads not guilty. Warden Basil Richards resigns. And case of rare viral disease confirmed in St. Thomas. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> TV8 News is brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn. In our top story, Louis Lolo Willis, the former legislative executive director indicted by a federal grand jury for bribery and extortion, has pled not guilty to the charges Wednesday in his first courtroom appearance since the indictment. The charges stem from an in indictment released May 8th by the U.S. Attorney's Office. According to the indictment, Willis role as executive director of the legislature between 2009 and 2012 included oversight of the renovation of the St. Thomas Legislature Building, which included awarding and entering into contracts on behalf of the legislature, including contracts for general construction, air conditioning, services, and carpentry, which were not publicly bid. Willis was also responsible for paying the contractors for their work. As alleged in the indictment, Willis accepted thousands of dollars in cash from three contractors in exchange for using his official position to secure contracting work for the contractors and to ensure they received payment upon completion. Willis was formally read his rights during his arraignment hearing in VI District Court on Wednesday and released on a $75,000 unsecured bond by Magistrate Judge Ruth Miller, who noted that Willis had already posted land as collateral for bail in connection with another case in VI Superior Court. Willis asked for a speedy trial, which Miller said will begin on June 30th. A pre-trial hearing in the case has been set for June 11th. New tonight, Golden Grove Adult Correctional Facility Warden Basil Richards has resigned after coming under fire in the wake of escape and recapture of a convicted rapist earlier this week on St. Croix. Governor John P. D. Young Jr. has today accepted the resignation of GGACF Warden Basil Richards. Richards over the weekend informally advised the governor of his intent to resign submitted a formal resignation letter on wednesday the letter was dated may 12 2014 and is effective immediately richards acknowledged that change is needed for both the correctional facility and for himself and his family he wrote in the resignation letter that he could no longer resist the need to implement change for him and his family. In other news, Governor John D. Young Jr. this week appeared on local talk radio show Straight Talk to address issues facing the territory, including the need for success of UVI's research and technology park. What I want to do more than anything, Holland, is save the research and technology park. Correct. I really, that, we need the research and technology park to be successful because we need the diversification in terms of knowledge base, e-commerce companies. Actually, we need to be able to get our young people. I was reading something the other day that says that the most popular area now within schools, and not necessarily high school or vocational schools, yeah. but middle school, is coding. Right. It's young kids getting into coding and sure. technology. So we need the research and technology park to be successful. But we need the research and technology park to be successful within the confines of the enabling legislation, mm -hmm. which said a physical presence had to be at the research and technology park for its tenants. What's happened here is that several of the tenants have gone the other way and, of and, course. Uh, with respect to where they're located. And, that's, and we've been able to work that out. But then in addition to that, they also said it has to be knowledge-based and e-commerce companies. Sure. And we have three companies that are not knowledge-based or e-commerce um, e right. e companies, and they're the ones that are pushing for this amendment that, that, that the senators have voted on. Yeah, in but addition to that, in addition to that, which makes it even, in worse. To my, worse to me, 
is that they also then go to the point of saying that their consultants and right. their advisors and their business managements should also be subject to not paying taxes wow. if they do business with those in, in the research and technology park. That is going just a little bit too far, particularly after the recession, after what we've had to go through, and particularly at the time when we need as much revenues as possible, legitimate revenues, mm -hmm. revenues that are due to the government as a result of activity that takes place. And retroactively, aren't they also granting, uh, again, exemptions all the way back to 2006, sure. aren't they? And I'm, I'm, well, you know, so yeah, but that's fine. But all I'm asking you is when you look at these things, and we're talking about the challenges that are ahead of you and expanding mm -hmm. the economy. In that case, you've got two programs. You've got the EDC program and the tech part. Right. Aren't they tripping over each other with this kind of stuff? Ultimately, they will. Because those individuals no, no, that now are, not, are blaming not, this thing should be should not, have been in the other program, not, shouldn't exactly. they? Exactly. Not if they each stood, not, not if, the, if the research and technology park stayed to its true principle, which is nice. that their purpose was essentially the growth on St. Croix at the university and the research and technology park itself with a nexus to the university, a right. nexus to the university. So that means that those companies interested in doing research and technology that are knowledge-based and e-commerce would have a nexus to right. the university. That's fine, that, and that's what we want to grow. I think that was the vision of Dr. Ken and, and Malcolm Kerwin and Dr. Delone, but that that's the vision that they wanted. What ended up happening is that they said, whoa, you know, we don't have a building. And since we don't have a building, let's look for some other creative way. Let's create what you call virtual tenants. Sure. And these virtual tenants can be located anywhere within the U.S. Virgin Islands. Right. And, and therefore, the mere fact that they're virtual tenants and they may have a relationship with the university. Maybe they give a scholarship. Maybe somebody goes to a yeah. class. That's a stretch. That's, it is a stretch. In local health news, a case of the rare chikungunya disease was confirmed in St. Thomas by health officials on Monday. While disease symptoms can be severe, they often do not result in death. Health Commissioner Darius Plaskett reported on Monday that health officials investigated the first confirmed imported case of chikungunya in a return traveler to St. Thomas that was associated with a recent cruise to the Caribbean. Chikungunya is a viral disease that is transmitted to people by infected mosquitoes. There is no vaccine to prevent the disease or specific antiviral treatment. Symptoms usually begin three to seven days after being bitten by an infected mosquito and include fever and severe joint pains, often in the hands and feet. Other symptoms may include headache, muscle pain, joint swelling, or rash. Commissioner Plaskett said that there have been an increasing number of confirmed cases reported in the Caribbean, prompting the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, CDC, to issue a level one watch for the Caribbean countries. CDC is advising travelers to the Caribbean to protect themselves from mosquito bites. Although there have not been any confirmed local transmission in the territory, residents and visitors are advised to take precautionary measures to avoid mosquito bites. Stay tuned. We have more news after this. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Synchroy businessman and gubernatorial candidate Gerard Luz James officially announced attorney Winston Brathwaite as his running mate for lieutenant governor. I want to just say that it's, it's more than a pleasure for me. Uh, I look at this as an opportunity to do the things that others would have wanted to do and may not have the opportunity or had the opportunity. Many individuals have passed these grounds before. The Virgin Islands have really changed a lot. It's not the same as it used to be. But even though it's not the same as it used to be, we can change it and put it into the right perspective. Sometimes speech don't do like what a heart will tell you to do. And I could talk all day, but this is not my day. This is attorney Winston Bratwick. Thank you all for being here. I am so excited to be here. I want to thank Luz for the opportunity to stand before all these wonderful people. Thank him for believing in me. 
I want to thank my parents and friends who stand by me. And I want to thank the people of the Virgin Islands. It is an honor to serve you. My name is Winston Brathwaite, and I am running with the next governor of the Virgin Islands, Mr. Gerard Lesley. to bring accountable, progressive, and compassionate leadership for a new direction in the Virgin Islands. We ask, we ask for your trust and your support. I was born here on St. Croix in the town of Christiansted at the then Charles Harwood Memorial Hospital. And now here is Mr. Bogle with your weekly entertainment report. Thank you very much, Julian. Good evening to everyone. Welcome to this weekend edition of your entertainment report. And we're going to start off with Friday night. You're looking someplace to go. All roads leads to the Jam Times Nightclub because it's all about the big, bad, unstoppable Kylo and the Styly Band. That's right. Alongside, you're going to have the youngest veteran DJ Chubby and the veteran DJ Pops. That's this Friday night down there at the Jam Times Nightclub. You definitely want to go and check it out. And we're going to keep it at Jam Times Nightclub also this Saturday. It's all about Pumper and the unit in Walk Up Mayhem. They say it was so nice they had to do it twice. Music by the youngest veteran DJ Chubby and Super Tracks International. $15 get you in before midnight. Doors open at 10.30 p.m. That's Pumper this Saturday down there at the Jam Times nightclub. Also want to tell you what's going on on Saturday down at the Educational Complex ground. It's the American Cancer Society Relay for Life. Finish the fight. Of course, it's a 24-hour event. It starts at 2 p.m. and closes at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So definitely, it's not too late to form a team. So come on out and support this event that is so good. It happens for the past, what, 12 to 13 years now. And there'll be some top-notch entertainment there for you just to give you a little insight. You're going to have, like, the digital band. You're going to have Fire Train. You're going to have people like Cherise King, Shanice Jeffords and so much more. You gotta come on out, you're gonna get some steel pump music. A lot of entertainment wise, you walk around the track. So please come on out and support our survivors for the American Cancer Society Really for Life. And then we wanna tell you about Sunday, the Ethiopian World Federation presents Agriculture Time. That's from 3 p.m. until 10 p.m. at the St. Croix Agriculture Fair grounds. You're gonna have Harry Moore, Mother Nile, Siku, Splijer, Ambush, Empress Aima, Excalibur. You're gonna also have Upper Level Band. You're gonna have the Reggae All Stars Band, Jacob Seeds, the Black Activist, Mr. Brown, Per Ank, UVI Professor Gerard Emanuel, Bambuli, and so much more. So you definitely wanna come on out and check out this event that Sunday, May 18th down there at the Agriculture Fair Grounds. Don't you dare miss it. It's gonna be something that you're gonna enjoy, your, the entire family that's definitely going to enjoy. Also wanna tell you, check out Spotnet Beach Bar and Grill this and every Sunday. And if I'm not mistaken, this Sunday, they're gonna have the Coolie Band. So you wanna go to the Spotnet, get something to drink, and enjoy the beach, and enjoy the Coolie Band music. Also, we're gonna move on. We know it's a big Memorial Day weekend coming up, and we gotta tell you, Chicky Thing presents um, a big Memorial Day dance as you do every year, Sunday, May 25th at the Crusaders nightclub. Music will be provided by DJ Young Brothers and DJ Leroy. And don't forget, it's followed by the big beach day. That's on Monday the 26th, down on the west side. So it's all about Chicky Thing and his Memorial Day weekend annual event. So you definitely want to go and check it out. But don't forget the Queen Show last week was postponed due to the inclement weather and it has been moved to Sunday, May 25th, still at the Island Center. That's I'm Every Woman 2014. So please come on out and full joy yourself. Those of you who still have your tickets, you can still bring your tickets and enjoy a very action-packed show. All right? And definitely, uh, we got to tell you about the big Calypso show happening that's May 24th, that's next Saturday at Gertrude's. It's all about the show and dance. Who you rolling with at Gertrude's, as I said. You're going to have from Dominica, King Dice, 
King Dice is a four-time consecutive National Calypso King out of Dominica. And you're going to have Sai, that's Dominica Road March Champ. And you're going to have the world famous Express Band. You're going to have Heart Attack Band. DJ Big Cat Sounds. And the MC will be Don Deal, the singing Fireman. Tickets are what? Um, the general admission for the tickets is just $30. Get them at the Gallows, Centerline Bakery, Jiffy Mart, and Ali's Grocery. That's a course from Kmart Appliances. And so definitely all of these events are going on this weekend and next weekend. I want to thank you for joining me here on the Entertainment Report. Remember, whatever you do, please do it peacefully. And if you drink, just don't drive. Back to you, Junior. More news straight ahead. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Here he is, Mr. Stephen Koo Francis, and he has your Sports 411 update with the weekend details of an inter island soccer tournament between St. Croix and Tartola. Thanks a lot, Junior. Stephen Koo Francis here with your Sports 411 update. I'm here joined by Manuel Lake from the Retroactive Sports Club, and they're having some activities, some soccer games this weekend. Manya, tell the folks what's going on and where it's going at. Yeah, uh, this is Retroactive Sports Club annual Goodwill Tournament, is Masters Tournament, and also within the Masters Tournament, we always feature the, the youth. And on Saturday, starting off, we have uh, Good Hope Country Day coming up against Woodson. And then following that, we'll be having Tartola will be in the house coming up against uh, Free Will, and Retroactive will be coming up against Rovers. And then on Sunday, we have a full program for you on Sunday. We have uh, the grassroots will be starting off at 12.30. Follow the grassroots, we have the Masters Tournament kicking in. And then between the Masters Tournament, we have the VI National Women's Soccer Team will be there also. You know, they're getting ready to go on a big tour. So it's a good time to come out and see the ladies in action. And following those, that game, it will be the retro retroactive coming up against Tartola and Rovers coming up against Freewell. So Sunday will be packed with a lot of soccer action and also some good entertainment will be down there. We will be covered by the Big Bad Tower Sound Saturday and Sunday. So come on out this weekend, come down to the Shang Ball Park where you can get some good f soccer action this weekend. Yes, um, and like you said, um, 28, 20 years anniversary, man. You know, that's definitely a milestone for you guys. Yes, you know, we started this thing uh, uh, 20 years ago, the Retroactive. What it was, you know, all of we was uh, national players, and you know, after they reach 35, 36, your national days are over. Mm -hmm. So we get into the Masters, and you know, we've been traveling the world within the last 20 years. We have been to England, and New, New York, New Jersey, uh, the whole Caribbean just about, and win tournaments just about everywhere we go. And Retroactive is a name to be reckoned with when it comes to Masters football in the Caribbean. It's definitely sound like a lot of fun this weekend. Folks, do what you can. Go on out to the Shang Ball Field this Saturday and this Sunday and check out the Retroactive Masters Tournament. This has been Stephen Koo Francis for News Channel 8 Sports. Back to you, Junior. Stay with us. Your weather forecast is up next. Your weather. Coming up next. Your weather. And here's a look at your local weather. Tonight, scattered showers, mainly after 8 p.m., partly cloudy with a low around 79, east and northeast wind around 17 miles per hour, chance of precipitation is 40%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. Friday, scattered showers, partly sunny, with a high near 83, east-northeast wind around 15 miles 
chance of precipitation is 40%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. Friday night, scattered showers, partly cloudy with a low around 78. East northeast wind 11 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. Saturday, scattered showers, mainly before noon, mostly sunny with a high near 82. East wind around 10 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. Saturday night, scattered showers, partly cloudy with a low around 79. East southeast wind 8 to 11 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. Sunday, scattered showers mainly before noon, mostly sunny with a high near 82. Southeast wind around 11 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. Sunday night, isolated showers partly cloudy with a low around 79. East southeast wind 11 to 14 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And Monday, isolated showers, mostly sunny with a high near 83. East southeast wind around 16 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And this is Essie Gaston Edwards with your News Channel 8 weather report. Thank you very much for tuning in. That's all we have for local news. Do not forget to like us on Facebook at WSVI CHA. You can also follow us on Twitter at WSVI TV News. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Junior Garcia, and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. TV8 News was brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn.